Yeah, so guys, I will, yeah, wait another 10 seconds. But first, first of all, a lot, a lot of you on the call that have dialed in, um, a lot of you know me, a lot of you know Raj, some people don't. Um, so first of all, what I will say is welcome. Um, this is a, a number of our uh, webinars that we host with an exchange at Crimson. And notoriously, they've been around architecture, but we've kind of just, what we've done is we looked at trends in the market um, and noticed a few things like agile, cyber, um services and a few other things so that so we've got loads of episodes to look forward to so we've kind of changed it up a little bit and we've got a lot of success with um attendees and um uh, people that really want to get to know about agile so there's no other better person than, than to get raj on because he's an absolute expert as, as some of you may know and some of you will find out so first of all my name is chris o'brien um i've been working at crimson over 18 years um, so yeah, it's pretty much like half my life at Crimson. Um, started off in IT myself for for Crimson, and now I head up the cu customer engagement, which is a lot of the things that I do. It's around um, customer interaction and candidate and contractor and uh, permanent uh, executive recruitment, which is what we do. Host webinars. Um, we we place like candidates across the UK, and we're also um, a global business or part of a global business which is worth over a billion pound crimson as itself turns over 22 million uh, revenue a year um and yeah many more within solutions we're also a microsoft gold partner so yeah let's get straight into it though so there's raj there who's the expert within agile uh, raj has been is an agile enterprise coach uh, with safe 6.0 um certification He's yeah, he's an expert. He's currently working for one of our customers at the moment, and he's certified from right nearly 300, um, nearly 300 people, and that's things like RTEs, um, uh, delivery managers, um, etc. Like, there's quite a lot of people that he's certified, and there's many more to do actually within all, all the customers that we work with. So I'm really, you know, really proud um, and and happy to 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 invite Raj to this. Um, a, a bit more going in, in crimson before we go back to Raj is on this slide crimson established over 20 years in 2001 uh, we specialize with it recruitment and cio services as i say we're an it solutions and goal partner within microsoft we've got this is 170 plus clients uk wide um i think we've got nearly 200 now so that needs to be updated but it's good it's a good time got good growth um we've uh, our mps score is plus 67 which is above average with within with the globe so um, and as I say, we work with IT leadership events and webinars and workshops. And that's a bit about Crimson. So I'm going to go straight into Raj. Um, Raj, if you want to do a little instruction about yourself, and then we can go straight into it. Yeah. So glad to be here, Chris. Really glad to be here. And uh, I can't wait to start. Awesome. Brilliant stuff. OK, so let, let's get cracking. So. What, what I would like, we've only got obviously an hour of a lunch and we've got quite a lot of people that have logged in and signed up. We might get people that will come in throughout the, the hour. Um, there may be an episode two, depending on what we get through as well. So first of all, what I want to do is start from the very start. So some people that have logged in may not even know what Agile is, but they're interested or they've got a number of reasons why they've logged in. So what I'm going to say is right from the very start, Raj, three things, because this is going to be a and a So first of all raj what is agile um what's the difference between agile and waterfall because a lot of customers get this confused a lot of contracts get confused um and a lot of scrum masters can get this confused as well so to get the difference between waterfall and agile and also lastly is these three three questions what is the difference between agile scrum kanban and safe and other principles if you're able to answer these raj we'll be happy to go yeah uh is that okay if i share my screen uh, absolutely yeah, you yeah. go for it. Right. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. So we're going to pick up one by one. So I think I have already picked up maybe three. First, normally I pick up in the trainings as well. Uh, that what is agile? Difference between waterfall and agile. This is very. Uh, uh, fundamental question I get asked every day and also what is agile what's the difference Kanban is Scrum, safe and then what is safe so we're going to pick up all these 10 uh, sort of you know 10 questions we're going to uh, walk through of course you know there are so many so many questions in people's head so we can't cover everything but if you do have any questions please put either in the chat window or 
uh, maybe the last 10, 15 minutes, we'll have some questions and answer sessions. So yeah, we'll answer uh, any of those questions there. So let's get going. We only got 40 minutes. So what is Agile? Uh, first of all, uh, I think uh, we discuss all about the incremental development and all these things, but I will come on to that one. But from the Agile perspective, uh, it's about a mindset. It's about a value system, a philosophy, a way of thinking, and a culture. It's not about just that we're using Jira or Kanban, we become Agile. It's more about the mindset. And ultimately, using those practices, mindset, that we are able to deliver the value to our customer. So it's ultimately a value system by adopting all those practices. So that's what we call it Agile. From difference perspective between waterfall and Agile, please remember this is not about comparing that waterfall is bad or Agile is good or either of them, right? That intention is not comparing, but over the last 10, 15, 20 years, technology have moved on, the tools and technology that they enable a lot of incremental development now, even one-click deployment. If we remember now, uh, Amazon, they release roughly 40,000 releases every single day, right? And that is only possible, A, of course, you know, a little bit of agile mindset, but more importantly, the tools are allowing at the moment those things to happen. One-click deployment, we can deploy, we can release a uh, number of times in a day. Before we have come from the, uh, you know, a period where uh, we were releasing every three months or six months. Uh, so we have got those tools and capabilities available. But from the difference perspective, waterfall historically have been a phased gate approach. So for example, first we write the requirements uh, and then the maybe high level business design, then detailed design or implementation, and then we test the system integration UAT and then we deliver that value. So it's more like a phased gate approach and values delivered ultimately in the end, all in one go. But from the waterfall perspective, it's all about incremental delivery, that how we can deliver in the smaller chunks. But that's not the only thing. Most important part of waterfall is that A, we build incrementally small steps and we get the feedback and we adjust our solution to incorporate that. So every time we are building the solution, we are reducing the risk. Uh, rather than in the end when we open up and things start to go wrong, then it's too much for us to pick up. We have been part of the organizations or the waterfall delivery that we have worked for eight months and then we feel like we are ready to go live. When we start opening things up, then it's another six months worth of work because things are not working because there's just too much of a risk. So that's what uh, Agile try to address. Build incrementally, get feedback, then we reduce the variability and the risk. And one of the key aspects of uh, Agile is incremental development, and it's all about building quantifiable small steps improvements and get the faster feedback from the customer. And then we can also respond to a change. Of course, respond to a change does not mean that every time a requirement comes that we will, of course, deal with that or we will incorporate. But ultimately, that we take a view that if it is really important, then OK, yes, we need to respond to it. But as a product owner or the people who make a decision, then they can decide, yeah, OK, we're going to wait for it. Maybe we will put a couple of months later or next month. So it's all about just responding whether is it important to us or not. What is difference between Agile, Scrum, Kanban, SAFE or any other framework? So this is a question which you get asked all the time. So from Agile perspective, Agile is a mindset, which we did discuss earlier. And in this sense, Agile, Agile is an umbrella term. So it's like anybody can be Agile, but some of these frameworks, whether it's a SAFE, Scrum, Kanban, they provide as a framework that how we adopt the Agile practices. So Agile is not a framework, it's not a methodology, but all other ones are either a framework or methodology which provides some of those practices which we use in Agile. So Agile is an umbrella term. Other ones are the framework to achieve or being Agile. And these are some of the uh, frameworks which we have discussed, whether SAFE is one of them, Crystal, we don't use that much now. We have Kanban, uh, Scrum is uh, 
uh, heavily used at the team level. Roughly 87% uh, of the teams use Scrum uh, as of now, as per the State of Scrum Report 2022. Uh, but most important is about the practices. Right? Practices that, okay, we are time boxing. We are delivering value incrementally, whether it's a one week, two week, three week, four week, we also call them a sprint. So we are delivering value in a certain time box manner, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. And then we are getting feedback with the demos. And also we are making things visible. We are learning from it retrospective. So this is what Agile is. I will now go and speak a little bit. Sorry, does that answer your question, first of all, Chris, uh, before I go on to the safe? Absolutely, yeah. very detailed, considering, you know, people aren't sure about Agile, so it's very detailed. Um, but these are going to be more deeper now, I guess, with, with SAFE, the SAFE framework. So, yeah, really interested to, to find out a bit more now, Raj. Perfect. OK, so what is SAFE? So this is like a, a not a new concept. I think SAFE has been around the blocks uh, for last 12, 13 years. Uh, so what is SAFE? SAFE is a flow based framework, right? which emphasizes not just the team level agility, but the organizational agility or enterprise ability to deliver the continuous flow of value to its customer. It's all about how we can deliver value faster to our customer. Of course, this is just a, like a very simplified definition, but why should organizations use SAFE? So that's very important that why should uh, organizations use? So one of the thing is, which we did discuss earlier, that SAFE is not about the team level framework. It is not meant for the team. Uh, so team level, we have got Kanban or Scrum. SAFE is at the organization level, how we become as an organization, we achieve business agility. And SAFE integrates the lean, agile, DevOps into very comprehensive operating system, which will help the enterprises to not just survive a thrive in the digital age. We all are in digital age as of now, right? So how we can deliver value faster than our competitors or we increase our customer engagement, customer satisfaction. So this is all about that. But we are not in that stage anymore now that uh, uh, where when we talk about agile, that only IT team, you become agile, you are using Scrum or something, but that's only optimizing just one component. From safe perspective, that is not just becoming agile, that's just one area. So we might be delivering that very faster from the IT perspective, but when we go to legal, compliance, fraud, that still take six months. So ultimately, the flow of the value is still going through the bottlenecks. So safe is about that, that's how do we optimize value from start to end where customer gets that value. And on that front, safe aligns with the lean thinking. Lean thinking is that any product or any service, any organization is uh, uh, delivering to their customer or intend to deliver to their customer, right? So we should specify that what value this product or service will provide to a customer or to internal as an organization. And then we organize people, whoever we need to deliver that value or that product to our customer. Why do we do that? Because if we have got the people organized around that, then it means we have got the right capabilities, right people to deliver that value. So there will be minimum, minimum we can minimize the hands off and the dependencies, which will enable us as an organization to make that flow without interruptions. Most of the time delays happens because one team is waiting on the other team, one you know um, department is waiting on the other departments, those dependencies are not matched or handshake, and that's where most of the delays happens. And it's not about just like whether customer is ready for the solution or the product or no, we should enable the customer if something is you know ready now, but the product is not needed until, for example, Christmas, then we have it's too early. There's no point delivering that value now because when customer is needing that. So it's all about that. But not just delivering the value that we should be getting that feedback that what we can improve on, upon, on our uh, uh, product. So it's about pursuing the perfection as well. We're not going to get everything right, right? But we going to get feedback from the customers. And on the right hand side, Safe, Scrum, Kanban, they all are built on I will not go much into detail, but they are all built on agile values. What are those agile values? Where we know that 
the focus should be on individual and interactions rather than all the processes and the tools. And ultimately, from the agile perspective, that we are working in small increments and we are able to demo as a working software. That's even though it's not finished product, so was what we as a team we have achieved. So we can get the feedback from the business or stakeholders. They can provide that feedback. They're like, no, I'm not sure whether I like that screen. So we can correct on that one. And the mm -hmm. next uh, increment we build, then we build on the correct requirement or correct solution. And customer collaboration over contract negotiation. This is like we are collaborating. Everybody's a customer, whether third parties who are working. So how we are working collaboratively and responding to change over following a plan. So this is the same thing which I said earlier, that it does not mean that if teams get a requirement at the very last minute, that it means they will do it every single time. Intention is not that. Intention is that, yes, OK, if it is really important and if we don't do this and put the product into uh, a customer's hands, it's going to make the service worse. So customer won't be happy. So there is no point putting that. So in that case, we should delay and respond to this change. But in some cases, we might have to wait. Then, look, okay, it's not urgent, and we can pick up in the next, um, you know, sprint or month or so, depending on the priority. So all the frameworks they are roughly built all on these agile values. There are twelve principles as well, but I will not have time to go into them. But why safe? So uh, from the customer success stories, uh, there's a uh, link here we can read. Uh, uh, but organizations across the world who have adopted SAFE, uh, you could see some of the stats uh, that 50% faster time to market, 50% defect reduction. Uh, we all know that defects or the bugs, they are the one which delays all the you know, delivery or the value. Uh, 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 and it does not surprise me because it's all about building the quality code and then only we can scale. If we are not building the quality, we cannot scale. And then 35% increase in productivity. And of course, when teams know that, okay, they are clear, okay, with the alignment, the vision, why are they doing it, how they're doing it. And it makes, of course, everybody's motivated that why they aligned to a certain mission. And more importantly, why organizations they adopt uh, uh, SAFE, it is more about, if you see here, not team agility. Of course, many teams are very, very good in adopting, you know, agile and they are doing really, really well. But this is about business agility across the organization that how we get to that point and digital transformation or how we scale our agile practices. So they can get the benefit of employee engagement and the purpose that why they belong there, what the, what the mission is, what the vision is, how we trying to achieve. And then, of course, this from the portfolio perspective, that it connects the strategy, that how we're going to execute that strategy with all these tangible outcomes. So it's all about that and all the team level, how we're going to scale up from top down to bottoms up. So I will not go into more of this with marketing material, but these are the intents that it's not a team level framework, it's at the organization level. But then how do we achieve it? OK, it's all well and good saying that, OK, it's a business agility to you know, achieve the agility across the organization. So from safe perspective, uh, they have got the seven core competencies where they look for every organization or any organization who would like to adopt or achieve business agility. These are the seven core competencies. So when we talk about Scrum or Kanban, they are more in the team and technical agility. Lean agile leadership continuous learning culture, organizational agility, lean portfolio management, enterprise solution delivery, agile product delivery. Of course, it will not make much sense now, but I will explain later. But these are used from different, different perspective areas to achieve the customer centricity. What is customer centricity? That as an organization, we should be understanding that what, who our customer is, of course, number one. Number two, that understanding our customer, what mm -hmm. their needs are, mm -hmm. so then we can design the right solution for the customer. So all those uh, core competencies, they are needed that, okay, we can focus on the customer. And on that, we can measure each of them later, which I will explain that how do we know that how well we're doing on those core competencies. So I will show you in a couple of slides that one. But how do we know that, okay, an organization is ready for safe or no? 
And this area is, or these topics, maybe next two topics, they normally I have never seen discuss that um, frequent. So one is that how, when organizations go there, okay, I think we are ready to adopt SAFE. Of course, you know, anyone can adopt SAFE, right? If organizations feel that they are ready to, uh, but there are some as a enterprise coaches, we normally discuss or we make people aware that look, some of the checkpoints we should be having as an organizer, that mm -hmm. A, management timeline for results. What does this mean? From SAFE perspective, if an organization is looking to adopt SAFE, but management cannot wait even six months to get the tangible results or a certain acceler or acceleration of 200% within six months, then probably SAFE is not the right framework to scale. Reason being is that it's not about just a team framework or the team level activities. This is about enterprise or business agility. So you are organizing people. It's about culture and the transformation or the change. It takes time. So organizations will achieve that. They will, of course, deliver faster. They will deliver uh, much better, but it takes time. So expecting that all that to happen in three to six months is an unrealistic ask from the safe perspective. Right? Uh, big, why is that? I will explain in the next couple of slides. Also, I have said a couple of times that SAFE is not at the team level, but it is built on the team level. So the foundation for uh, scaling any framework, SAFE, one of them, is the teams or they are already quite good in using Scrum or Kanban or XP or any of the frameworks. So they are already aware that they know how to use it. So then it becomes a lot easier Then now the only thing they need to do is scale up and then how we align across safe. So they're only learning safe or a little bit of a alignment, but they are already very, very good on agile, safe, Kanban, Scrum, all those frameworks. The other thing is if any organization, if there are less than 50 people, then again, safe probably maybe not the right solution for them because safe relies quite heavily on uh, what we call it in terms of safe, agile retail, where the minimum number is 50 to 125. So we only got like three or four teams, roughly 10, 20, 40, of, of even up to 45 people or 50 people as well. Uh, it creates a layer, of course, it comes with the processes as well. So it's worth considering whether safe is the right framework for you. And the last one, this is the one mistake which many organizations I have seen. Sometimes we do not uh, think enough about uh, when we go about the safe implementation. That when we are talking about safe implementation, A, we should be thinking about how we're going to train our people. When we're going to train people, it takes like you know two or three days training. So if you're training a few hundred people, that not only it will cost the training uh, budget, of course, it will cost money, but more importantly, those people will not be working on those three days. Right. And of course, when they're taking exam, so we are going to lose some time. Hence, the point one comes into the picture that okay, we are going to learn first and then team will start practicing and then they will get better. Hence, it takes time. But more importantly, not only that, every team or every agile retail, which is a team of teams basically, that every team and they go through the different different phases. It comes from the tech man's model that when we are forming those teams, then they are bit guarded, but then when they start to be comfortable with each other, then conflicts start to happen. And then over a period, they start to norm, normalize, then they, they get to know how to work with each other. And then that comes a performing stage. Uh, we can't uh, you know, uh, fast track that because ultimately we are working or we are dealing with the people. It's the people who we are, who we are working with. So they need that guidance, they need that coaching, and they need more importantly, that time. Right, so then it helped them settle down. So all the teams they go through these phases: forming, storming, norming, performing. Only thing is, with the right guidance, right coaching support, we can minimize that time. Right. Sometimes some team they may never reach performing stage because if they don't have the guidance. So that's why this guidance and coaching is very very important. <clears throat> and these are some of the phases which every team normally goes through. That what happens when there's a five because there's a one for no ball automatically yeah, yeah. plus the four. Okay, but but then yeah. so I've just muted 
whoever that uh, was. <laughs> yeah, so I will not go into the detail, but there are, of course, you know, every stage that, you know, a bit more detail that what every team goes through or team of teams they go through. Uh, in storming phase is the one of the most challenging for any organization because that time you will see the conflicts start to appear and dealing with individuals and the teams. Uh, and of course, you know, they need a lot of support that time. So uh, and then once we get to the normal stage, then you know that okay, we are working more as a community, more as a team, caring for each other, sharing with each other. And that's where we expect the teams to start performing in three, six, nine months time. And of course, uh, as teams are working, these are also called five dysfunctions of a team. So we know that okay, it takes time to build the trust. And the absence of trust is one of the single most or it's a foundation of uh, basically uh, dysfunction in the team that if you don't have that trust then basically they are fear of conflict and then they are not committing to each other then of course accountability is diluted and then people not paying to the results maybe they're paying uh, uh, attention to their individual results but not as a collective ownership so how do we adopt safe or uh, scale agile framework so this is a very, I will not go again in detail on this one, but uh, one of the uh, implementation roadmap is if any organizations are looking to adopt. So first thing uh, they need to do is they need to reach out to someone like SPC who are experienced SPC. They have done a few safe implementations before in different, different organizations. So they have got idea of different flavors and different challenges. So uh, if they reach out to SPC. So normally SPC, for example, myself, they get engaged in the early days here. And then, of course, we go through the journey that, OK, first we need to train the leaders because it is a more importantly, organizational agility is about the business agility. So that leadership, they need to know that what they're signing up to. And it is them who are going to lead that transformation, not just the team level, but they are the one who are going to drive or who are going to set the vision, the mission, the strategy and it's their responsibility to explain why and sometimes many organizations suffer from this one that leadership or management we are not able to explain why we're making this change why we are going safe uh, so this is very very important that from the safe perspective that's why it is so successful that it try to address from where you know the mandate or the authority is and then we go through this journey we identify this value stream and reason I say value team, because most of the time you see the projects or the uh, organizations have adopted, but there are too many dependencies from one person to the other person or one team to the other team or one area to the other area. Value team is where once we understand that what we're trying to achieve, what value we're trying to deliver, how this value will be delivered, who are the people we need, then we try to minimize all those dependencies, handshakes, and just focus is on to deliver that value. And that's why uh, once we have gone through that, we understand what value we're delivering, what products we are delivering, then we organize people around that. Then we, of course, train those people. And then, of course, we provide the coaching that, okay, how they can become mature now. And then once we have done that, then um, we can launch more agile release train. But because we are already taking 80% of the learnings from the art, which we have recently launched. So every time we launch, they're already maturing day by day. But there are of course challenges. There are challenges uh, while adopting SAFE. So one of the thing is, which I said earlier, that uh, why many, many SAFE adoptions do have a challenge, that leadership not uh, able to effectively communicate that vision, the mission, the strategy, that why are we doing it? How are we going to do it? And what it is that how we trying to achieve it step by step? So this is always a challenge and not making the space for change to happen. Change is change, transformation takes time, right? So uh, not allowing three months, six months, nine months time, and all the time there's a urgency that we need to deliver this. Of course, you know, things will improve, but then there's a possibility that in the near term, three to six months, things might slow down even more than actually before adopting save. The other two things, which is uh, uh, point three and four is very important that uh, sometimes organizations thinks that uh, just sending the people on the training course uh, is enough. I mean, that really helps training the uh, people, that really does help. But 
from the coaching perspective, we always say that only gives mm -hmm. roughly 30 percent. So it allows the common language when people are back, uh, you know, from the training, they can understand what you know everybody is speaking, what the common language is, like what are the practices we are doing, how we doing it. But they need that uh, point four, the someone who can sit down with them, practical aspects that okay, how we doing it, ah, uh, is the right way of doing it, right? Or maybe this ceremony is not working, this is not working because of this, 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 right? So somebody can hand hold, guide them, coach them, and support them. It's very, very important that in some cases when we don't have that dedicated support or guidance, then some teams or some organizations, they do struggle. And the last one is also very important because sometimes I think we get too much uh, uh, emotional about safe. And many organizations think that their destination becomes adopting safe, which is wrong because safe. For example, if I'm a banking organization, my objective should be how can I deliver a better product or a service to my customer, whether that product is like delivering, you know, online banking, chat functionality or uh, personal loans or credit card, not safe. Safe is just a means to an end. It's a tool, right, which might help organizations to deliver that value faster. But ultimately, it's organization is what they can deliver, what they are supposed to deliver. And sometimes the focus gets shifted. So we should not forget that what the organization try to achieve and then all these tools we should be using in that context. But then how do we measure our success? That's OK. We have now adopted SAFE, right? How do we know it's working or not? So from uh, Deming, uh, I think he came up with this quote long, long back, which is still you know, my favorite, that you can't manage what you don't measure. How do we know how well we're doing against it? So from safe perspective, they have got this um, assessment, uh, business ag agility assessment tool, where it's a free, anybody can do it. They don't need to even adopt any organizations. They can uh, download and I'll show you a link how we can download. They can do it without adopting safe even before uh, that where they are and once they adopt then you can do regularly that okay every six months uh, that how much you are improving so they assess each and every core competency that how well the teams are doing here team and technical agility at the team level we as an organization maybe one level above as an agile product delivery how we are able to deliver the value to our customers uh, enterprise solution delivery across all enterprises all the solutions how we delivering lean portfolio management so across all those core, core, core competencies, we can score. It's not we, it's like everyone uh, who are the responsible, for example, leadership, they can score themselves. They're like, okay, how well we are doing? And there are very basic questions which they just need to answer and it will do all this calculation automatically and then we'll get a score across each sector. The intention is not that, okay, we get higher score. Intention is we have to be honest with ourselves and if we score low in any of the areas, the discussion is more about what we need to do to improve about the improvement items. Raj, I've got a question on the floor from Nigel. Um, so I will I will mention this before we go into the question 10, but please. Nigel's kindly asked, are we saying the safe framework of cover financial and, and procurement activities associated with projects? Correct. Absolutely. So not only that, it also covers the agile context because yesterday uh, we were running uh, LPM training and that's that's one aspect of it because some of the delays are that we want to engage with the supplier, the procurement and all these things. Now it's taking three months. Now the projects or uh, I might be using a little bit different language because of the people, but in agile terms, when the value streams are ready to go, and uh, we are not able to engage with the suppliers, whether it's a procurement process or anything. So that's what it covers. And specifically, actually, on this one, there are three questions in business agility assessment to cover those things, right? Everything. So we assess around them as well. And in some organizations, when we score low, then we discuss how do we achieve it, then how we engage, how we help those areas. So then they also start operating more in an agile fashion. That's a that's a really great answer. It's quite succinct, actually. So, um, that's and a great question as well, Nigel. Thank you for that. any more questions. Please pop them in the chat. We've we've got you know some good minutes to put you know to put a Q and A together. Um, but yeah, Raj, if you want to go now into obviously some training for different positions and available options, and that that'll be awesome. 
Yeah, so this is one of the things which we uh, get asked quite a lot that look, Raj, there are so many trainings, but we're not sure which training to go for. Uh, so th there are a lot of uh, uh, training certificates. So one of the things from the safe perspective that these first one, uh, they are considered more as a team level. So uh, uh, safe agilist or leading safe. So this is like uh, explaining, you know, what safe is, you know, any agile, lean agile leadership or leadership, they normally go on this foundation. So they understand uh, what safe is, but the teams who are actually doing the work uh, at the team level, they normally go on the safe for teams, which is more about explaining that, okay, what is it like how they should be operating at the team when they're delivering value, or if it's about DevOps, that these are the two team level practices. Uh, these are specialist roles. For example, if they are <clears throat> project manager, uh, they are converting into Scrum master roles, for example, or they are already Scrum masters, then this is Scrum master, or if they are more advanced, advanced Scrum master certificates are more appropriate for them. Also, if you are a business analyst or a product owner, uh, so then POPM or APM uh, are more suitable certificates for you. But of course, if you are a senior program manager or program manager, or you are operating as a release train engineer, then RT certification is uh, for you. From the architect or solution architect or enterprise architect, there's an architecture solution because it explains how those roles operate in safe, but also what their roles are, roles and responsibilities are. And there are some advanced ones, which is LPM one. Uh, so LPM is the one where how do we set up the port lean portfolio management? Right. This is one of the key aspects of the SAFE that, again, some organizations, sometimes we don't have enough focus on that. But then the challenge <laughs> we have, if we do not have the LPM setup, then we are not able to uh, sort of link the organization or strategy of the organization to all the value which will flow through to the teams. So we cannot see the strategy connecting all the way down to the you know, lower level value streams or the projects or the teams. Awesome. Uh, and now I just got another question as well, Raj. So, is there a book that covers the safe training paths? Sorry, or a or a, is there a book or a brochure that can cover, you know, the, the the safe training paths at all? Do you know of any, or is there one that's been published at all that Nigel could get his hands on, or any any mm -hmm. of the guys? Yeah. So I think uh, actually I might have it here, but I might have just uh, you know uh, hide it because I'm not sure this question will get asked. So we have got all these things detailed, Nigel, and not now, but I can send you if you need. I can send you all these details that for each and every training that who should attend, you know what the pass marks are, all the details. So I'm more than happy to share if you can, you know, either drop me a note or just uh, uh, send me your email. Awesome. That's brilliant. Cheers, Raj. And um, maybe just uh, uh, last slide. So this is uh, yeah. Accelerate Agile. So we have done a lot of uh, safe transformations, uh, five transformations we have done. We have trained like more than 1,000 people in the last couple of years for different, different clients uh, across the board, across the globe. Uh, so yeah, if there's anything uh, you want to talk about, either Agile, Safe, Scrum, Kanban, or looking to adopt uh, uh, Agile or Safe, or you have already adopted, but having some challenges, don't know what those challenges are, uh, or any trainings, feel free to drop me a note or book a 30 minute consultation. Awesome, that, that, that was superb. That was really, honestly, really good. Um, there's another question on the floor as well from Matthew Mill. Um, so Matthew Milsom, he's basically saying, are we saying that there is a direct mapping between traditional project roles and safe roles? Uh, that's a very good question and very tricky to answer. So yeah. normally, uh, it is not, right? Because remember what I said that um, uh, earlier, uh, that re assessing the readiness. So ideally, we should be in a position from the safe perspective that people are already operating in some shape of agile, whether it's Scrum, Kanban, safe. So in that case, they already are aware of all these agile practices and all. So that's normally the ideal way. But of course, some organizations, they normally flip from the waterfall to safe. In that case, what is considered, uh, Matthew, that, okay, normally uh, Scrum Masters or project managers, they become Scrum Masters. Uh, program managers, they normally are considered for the RT role. BAs or maybe proxy uh, BAs, they are considered for the product owner role. So normally there's a guidance that they are normally mapped out. But awesome. only thing is, please be mindful of that. When we do that, 
then it means the challenge is that not only the people when we are swiping the roles, they are understanding about safe, but they are also have to understand about Scrum, Kanban and other things which can slow down the maturity level. That was really well answered. There's another question as well from Nigel. So do you have any case studies of a safe deployment idea to a BAU? Yeah, yeah. So this is, uh, I mean, uh, I won't name the client, but three clients, uh, uh, we have done that. Uh, because from the agile perspective or safe perspective, that's the intent, that it's nothing about uh, BAU or, uh, you know, from the safe perspective, agile perspective, you build it, you support it. We call it a, a calmer approach. Calmer is first word is C, which is a culture, that is a culture of shared responsibility. So it's not that we have developed something, we have handed over to the service management or the BAU, then they will deal with that. It's everybody's responsibility. So the teams are set up is that, okay, you should keep in mind, you are going to develop it and you're going to support it. So brilliant. That, that, and to be honest, that really, that, that's a wraps of a really good 45 minutes of, of explaining agile from the very first into a bit of deep, a deeper detail there. Uh, we could potentially have another episode of this as well, guys, depending on the, the influx of attendees, because we got quite a lot this uh, today. Um, so what you'll shortly see in the chat is a poll. Um, so that, that poll, if you can look at the chat now, that poll will appear. Uh, if you guys can start answering if it's been useful, extremely useful, um, not so useful, which will be <laughs> obviously controversial, but we'd like to know why. Um, I, I thought personally, I thought Raj was fantastic and the way you've, you know, you, you came across and you've explained everything. Um, so I, I definitely love another episode to be honest, going into a bit deeper um, detail in towards safe. Um, so yeah, no, if you guys can, can can go on with that with that poll, it'd be great to see the responses. I've already seen what, 20 responses already, which is, which is fantastic. I'll just so let today, that. Uh, uh, Chris, we have only covered very basic or very foundation, but yeah. uh, what I was uh, saying earlier that normally in the value stream mapping, those things are captured when things are not going well uh, or where are the delays are, how efficient or how flow we are delivering value to the customer. So yeah, there are uh, definitely a lot of tools uh, within SAFE or Agile that we can um, adopt them and you know pinpoint where the challenges are. Awesome, fantastic. Thanks, Raj. So yeah, just finally as well, a couple of links here. So there's a Crimson QR code and, it, and a Accelerate Agile, which is the company that Raj also work, works for. So obviously you guys know that Crimson um, you do a lot of things, you know, do a lot of good things in IT recruitment, executive, executive search, as I mentioned before, permanent and contract resources. So anything that any of the, your new assignments, projects, you need to cover with uh, projects, um, project resources, SOWs, uh, we're there to help. Um, Accelerate 8 are obviously the experts within Agile, which we can introduce um, and they introduce us, which is also superb. And they're currently in flight with a few of our customers at the minute and the case studies as obviously Nigel mentioned as well, there are at the moment, I mean, flight ones are, are really, really, really impressive. Um, so yeah, we are we are keen to get another one. Um, so we've got one more question actually before we wrap up, which is from Louise Clark. So what are the long-term considerations a business needs to bear in mind when deploying SAFE? There you go, Raj, one last question to finish off with. Yeah, no, and, and I think this is a very good question. And I know that maybe in the second uh, webinar, we can pick up that in detail because normally what happens is, is uh, about the maturity uh, that uh, uh, we can go into the detail next one that, OK, uh, what are the two approaches when businesses adopt safe? So one is a that uh, a perfect by the book approach that we uh, identify the various teams and then we launch, make it perfect and then again accelerate. The other ones are that we do one flip, all the teams, everybody we flip and then we of course mature those teams. It takes time and that's why setting up some lean agile center of excellence who can keep an eye or also support those transformations over a period, right? And then the teams and agile retrains and the businesses, they can mature that's a continuous process. It's a continuous learning, right? Whether it's a one year, two year, three year. I'll give you one example. Uh, one of the banking clients, one of the biggest bank in UK, uh, when I was there in 2015, 16, they adopted SAFE that point. We were the first one to do the first PI planning. Uh, uh, and today, even 2023, almost like eight or nine years later, they are more mature. They're like in 50 or 60 PI planning. So it's not a just adopting, 
it's like you know maturing with that yes yeah, joe on that as well one thing i would say is uh one in particular customer um that we work with and and you're there obviously raj doing all the the same accreditation certifications there's one in particular where you mentioned on one of the slides about the 30 to 50 percent typical engagement uh with you know you can see all the stats of 60 70 percent but the 30 to 50 of the engagement of sort of a harmonious um you know um culture and people getting involved and people actually moving from roles to being you know working in pmo or, or development to an rte because i think you know it's flavor of the month let's get involved in agile i've saw that from you know from a live um sort, sort of a live um area really i've walked on site and you're delivering i'm seeing people smile on the face everyone's really engaged so I've seen that from you know from myself, which is which is superb. It's great to see. There's a couple more questions actually, so we've got some time. So yeah, I can read one of them. I think it's uh, okay. I know Bob, you can pick up, but I think there's one thing very important. I think maybe if I can take, I think this is what all factors and the points which results to failure of safe implementation. Any That's suggestions? It. So I, I I think if that's okay, I'm gonna pick up that one, and this is a really good one because I have seen not me personally, but I've seen in some organizations. So uh, one of the things is where uh, we still see that mindset that where uh, organizations have decided uh, that, OK, we're going to adopt safe and we have gone with that, but we have not gone almost. If you remember in one of the slides, I was saying that if you start, once you're ready, engage an experienced SPC or the transformation coach who knows how these things are done, we set up properly. Sometimes organizations do bypass that step right so they think they can do themselves especially the leadership or management right and then over a period they sometimes don't make an effort to understand so it is left onto the teams and which is again too low level so that becomes a challenge the challenges are the teams will do well right because they do great normally but the challenges are normally at the higher level right for example if there's a funding issue right some tools are not there it's not team who can address, they cannot find the funding. Funding, it comes from the leadership or the management. So sometimes that creeps the frustration. So it's very, very important that management finds time to understand, and most importantly, somebody there to help even the leadership as well. Awesome, that was really well answered. And there's, there's also some great feedback there. And then Nazim, as I mentioned, then it's, you've actually explained a lot of what you've said in such a simple non-jargon language that anybody can understand, which it's great because there's, there's probably for some people on the call that I've got no idea about Joel or very minimal and want to learn. And um, there's also, I know, obviously, a lot of the team at Crimson have, uh, have logged on as well from a recruitment perspective. So it's great for us to understand it from, from that point of view. So to want to, as, as Nazim just said there, to actually explain it the way you have, um, it's helped from a recruitment perspective because when then we start recruiting and talk about agile scrum masters and agile coaches and RTEs, we've got a, not just a flavour, but we've got a deeper understanding from the way you've explained it there. So Raj, so it's really, really good. Thank you. You're most welcome. It was an absolute pleasure. Awesome. Hopefully, if we do another episode and a bit more deeper than that, will be a, obviously we need to see the feedback first. Thank you. Um, I'm pretty much guaranteed it's going to be positive. But yeah, if anybody else has got any questions before we go, then you know, even if you want to you know, come off mute and, you know, um, you know, go on camera and, and have a have a quick couple of questions with Raj and that'd be fantastic. Thank you, Raj. That was really great. I really enjoyed listening to that. Really appreciate it. Well done. Well done both. Thank you, Louise. Thanks, Louise. Thank you very much, Raj. Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you, Raj. Um, that was amazing. And that was my feedback as well about the non-jargon language. Um, I just Absolutely. have a question. How does uh, a PMO or a DMO fit in this whole framework? Ah, that's a very good question, actually. And I'm glad, uh, Nusrat, you have asked me that question. I know it's late. Uh, so in LPM, remember, I touched a little bit upon the LPM. That some of the sometime organizations, we uh, don't uh, implement that properly. Uh, and that's one of the challenges where uh, all these things, where PMO, uh, DMO, uh, in the traditional world, so they are part of the LPM function. So. If you, I know I'm trying to stay away from the, you know, safe jargon. So when these uh, values teams are identified, 
So they are all coordinated, the metrics, mm -hmm. the budgets and all, they are done by LPM. So we call that uh, same what we have in VMO, uh, sorry, uh, PMO, DMO in SAFE, we call it VMO. Now, this is called value management office, right? So, but roughly the functions are the same. So they are responsible coordinating, uh, uh, helping with the budgeting, uh, tracking that, okay, how well we're doing against our finances, against all these things. So similar functions, but more in agile terms. Great, thank you. That, that's awesome. Joe, you know we're right at the wire as well. So if have got another five minutes to get himself a cup of coffee within a lunch break or a, a quick sandwich or a salad. Uh, but honestly, I, I will want to say, you know, you've got the QR codes there to get into it straight, you know, straight into to Raj and, and ourselves as well at Crimson. But I appreciate all the comments, all the questions, everyone that's attended, some of them haven't attended. It doesn't matter because this is going to go on YouTube um, and hopefully, depending on feedback, we could have episode two. So thank you everyone again for attending and hopefully we'll see you again for another exchange and take care thank you thank you so much bye bye thank you raj thank you raj thank you